What's going on guys and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie and today we're going to be going over the sleeper team from each MLB division. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and are subscribed to Touchdowns to Home Runs. And as always, enjoy the video. From the AL East, we have the Toronto Blue Jays. And this offseason, they have already added Ryu, Rorick, Anderson, Shaw, and Yamaguchi, only losing Justin Smoke, which means that the Jays roster is looking a lot better going into this season. This season, we will also get to see the second years of the Jays' big three, Biggio, Guerrero, and Bichette, as well as the return of Matt Shoemaker from injury back into the starting rotation. The Jays are looking very good this year on paper, but injuries, especially in the starting rotation, is still a major concern. The Yankees and Rays are still obviously the favorites to win the division, and for the Jays to beat them, they would need a lot to go right, but I think the Jays this year can realistically aim for a second wildcard spot. From the AL Central, we have the Chicago White Sox. This offseason so far, they've signed Dallas Keuchel and Yasmani Grandal, who will be able to show huge impacts in their starting rotation and in their lineup. The White Sox also have potentially two of the best young players in baseball in Ilo Jimenez and Yoan Moncada, who were both good last year and could take even further jumps this year for the Chicago White Sox. Looking around the rest of the field, they're pretty solid. They've got Colome and Herrera in the bullpen, and rounding out their lineup, they've got Encarnacion, Tim Anderson, and Jose Abreu. Looking at the rest of the division, you'll probably project the White Sox to finish third behind the Twins and the Indians, but the White Sox do have the potential to finish higher than that and possibly even sneak into the playoffs. Out of the AL West, we have the Angels. The Angels made their big splash this offseason by signing Anthony Rendon, but Angels fans can also look forward to getting Shohei Otani back into their starting rotation. The big concern for the Angels this year are their other four starters, but the Angels do have some high ceiling starters like Julio Tehran and Dylan Bundy, who didn't do great last year but could potentially do good in 2020. I do think though that if the Angels are doing good further into the season that it is in their best interest to sign a big name starter, but I think the Angels are off to a great start and I think that they will definitely be more competitive this year. Moving into the NL and into the NL East, we have the New York Mets. The NL East is potentially the most difficult division in baseball, with the Mets having to compete with teams like the Braves, Phillies, and Nationals. But looking at their lineup, they have guys like Pete Alonso, Robinson Cano, Jeff McNeil, and Michael Conforto. But the real strength of the Mets is in their starting rotation, with their starting five of Jacob deGrom, Noah Syndergaard, Marcus Stroman, Michael Walker, and Rick Porcello. It's really hard to justify having the Mets over fourth in the division and ahead of any of those other teams, but I definitely think with some of the players that they have, they can definitely surprise some people this year. In the AL Central, we have the Cincinnati Reds. Right now, you'd probably be putting the Cardinals and Brewers marginally ahead of the Reds, but the Reds have put themselves in a position where they can be competitive this year. Recently, they've added Cassianos, Bauer, and Wade Miley, not only adding to their lineup, but leaving a starting rotation of Castillo, Gray, Bauer, Disclafani, and Wade Miley. Not to mention that the Reds possibly have the most underrated player in baseball in a Eugenio Suarez. I still think the Reds are a little ways away from being able to win the division, but I definitely think the Reds are going to be a lot more competitive this season. In the NL West, we have the San Diego Padres. The Padres were a little underwhelming last year after high hopes after spending a lot of money to sign Manny Machado. However, the Padres still have a good, young core centered around Machado and Tatis Jr. Along with that, the Padres have a young rotation with huge upside with Paddock, Lamette, and Lucchese. Realistically, I would put the Padres at a second wildcard spot in the NL. If you made it to this point in the video, thank you. And if you like today's content, make sure you leave a thumbs up and are subscribed to Touchdowns to Home Runs. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.